Right, um, hello again, and uh, we're now looking at going to look at uh, proportional uh, integral control. Just going off to get my mouth and come back here. Right, okay. So, uh, first of all, uh, we're going to look at the um, uh, the actual block diagram of a uh, proportional integral control system. So, here we see uh, the diagram uh, not dissimilar to the original uh, proportional control which where we had the north as our final position uh, this is the error detector producing the error signal here and this is our k value which we then monitored on the channel 2 on our oscilloscope which is k times the error and um, uh, this is a new block here uh, then we feed through the limiter to the servo and the servo drives the, com uh, the magnetometer, the compass pointer and we get the error information, the actual position back to define the error. So now we're going to look at an integrator. And so the uh, integrator, we have a new constant, uh, a new um, uh, uh, constant here, which uh, we can vary. Um, and this is defined as... Uh, I uh, kept on referring to uh, Geiger uh, nickels. It's like Zeigler nickels. So I, uh, my apologies for getting the name wrong. Uh, so the Zeigler nickels method uses the original uh, k value from the proportional control system and uses an integration time um, to determine the period of the integration. And uh, so this is where the k over ti comes from. So we've got this constant here, and then we're actually feeding that in, and the integrator is effectively the sum of the error signal, the error signal here, um, times this uh, constant, uh, times delta t. So the delta t is the time between samples. Uh, so we're taking multiple samples. We know roughly that, um, that it's about four or five milliseconds for a sample to be taken. Uh, so that's what we're expecting to see here. Now, this can actually be um, uh, rewritten um, because in terms of processing uh, it's uh, better to actually calculate this and then put it on the end rather than actually do it right at the start. So uh, we can actually redraw this slightly and so I'm now going to look at it like this. So here's the redrawn version and so what we've done here is we've actually put the uh, k divided by ti um, over here because what I'm really interested in is actually what is the accumulation of this error like? What does it actually look like in real time? And it's really interesting to see this. And this is why I've done it around this way. Ultimately, it's the same equation. It just depends on where you, um, where you sample it from and, uh, and from, from the purpose of display, uh, what we're actually looking at. So one of the channel outputs uh, that we've got in the proportional integral control system allows us to actually see the summation of this error times delta t, which is a really fascinating signal um, and explains an awful lot about what happens in uh, inter uh, integration uh, systems. And then I multiply by constant. Now this constant is, because it's k over ti, these are known things that are defined at the start of the runtime of the algorithm. So this can actually be calculated as k divided by ti as becoming a, a new constant, uh, which uh, we we'll just call it the global, um, uh, global constant for the integrator. And that means I don't have to keep on performing this division every time I do a scan, which actually saves on processing time. So... Uh, and I've just noticed I haven't actually got my uh, software up. So let me just um, uh, come out of this and open up the software on here. And then we'll just go back uh, to the, um, the uh, image here. And so once again, uh, we're going to add the K times the error. And now we're going to add the ink. Uh, the integral component, add those two together to make the total result, which is then uh, put into the limiter as before to then drive the servo to actually move the compass. And then we once again detect through the magnetometer uh, the actual present position in order to get an error. And it goes round and round and round. And what we're trying to do is get this point here, the magnetometer, to be a zero position. So we've got zero error and everything works. Now, what's really interesting is you've got to understand this summator because this error is probably never exactly zero. So 
with the K system, uh, with the proportional system, everything's relatively stable. But when you've got an integrator in there, if you've got any small errors here, then it will still carry on calculating these errors and performing this task. And what you will notice is in a PI control system, you start to get a little bit of movement of the system because the error is never exactly zero. And so this starts to accumulate and it still corrects itself, but you find the pointer does move a little bit from left to the right because of this integration. So it's actually really important to actually understand that aspect uh, when you start putting integrators in. If we were going to, we, we're not going to do differential control, but similarly, what you would do as the differentiator is you do the same thing. You have a block like this and you add it to the circuit and you'd sum the whole lot. And then you'd actually do a full PID control system. So that's actually what's going on in here. So I hope that's uh, read to the clear because this is in relation to actually what the, uh, how the software is written. So I just wanted to show you this so you actually understood uh, how it related to the software, but it is actually the same as uh, this, where in fact, which I think is more, uh, a little bit more similar to the drawings and diagrams you've got um, uh, if you look at this um, from a theoretical perspective. So uh, let's just see if my, Software has come up. Uh, yes, it has. Uh, that's great. And let's go into main. Uh, it's just taking a little while to sort out. My PC is very, very slow. It took seven hours to <laughs> download the last video, uh, which is 30 odd minutes long. And uh, <laughs> I started it last night and it failed halfway through the night and I had to do it again this morning. So, um, uh, let's just have a look at the uh, proportional, there we go, uh, this is run proportional integral algorithm and uh, here's the proportional integral control. So what I'm going to do is just show you the HMI associated with this and here's the HMI. I hope you can see that uh, quite clearly. Um, so what we now have is we've got the, uh, as it regards to status uh, messages, it tells us quite a lot. What we can do is we can actually look at the present compass position, which is just telling us what the sample was at the time that this was taken. Um, and here's our P uh, and PI uh, gain uh, uh, K value. So this is what you'll remember from the previous experiment when we were doing our uh, proportional control. So this is that K value that we're actually putting in. Now also what we're going to do is put in integration time. And now that comes from the uh, period of oscillation uh, that we saw when the system was unstable. Now I've actually uh, built tables up, which you will see from the PowerPoint presentation when you look at all of this, when it's all tied together, um, this whole complete lab. And I've actually written out the tables from yesterday's experiments uh, from the last video. And I've also ran them again, just to be a little bit more uh, precise about uh, the values. Um, so you'll see that uh, in the PowerPoint presentation uh, when you uh, when you go through this. And what I've done is, this is just an example um, that remember from the Zeigler Nichols uh, formulas uh, that if you're doing a PI control system, you take around about 0.8 uh, of the um, integration of the uh, period of oscillation. And that period of oscillation was 400 um, uh, milliseconds. And so I've made this 320 milliseconds because uh, I've been running this experiment, playing with it before we got here, uh, got to this stage. So I'm just telling you what's going on here. Now, what's also interesting to know is what is the, t uh, the approximate delta T time? So let's just go back to our um, AutoCAD here. There's the uh, delta T. So this is in the integrator. I'm just going down to the other one here. Uh, there we go, in here. So what I'm interested in what the delta T is, just to give you a rough idea of how long it takes to extract the actual uh, information to cyclically go around this loop. Um, so that's the delta T time here. So, uh, and that is approximately uh, around about 4.4 uh, 4 to 4.5 milliseconds. And once again, we've got our uh, gain and attenuation, but we're using all four channels this time. So, uh, so to actually represent maths in the system, uh, channel one, as before, was the error. Channel two, as per the last experiment, is the proportional result. And channel three is the integral result. So that is the, uh, let's see, where's my, uh, there we go, AutoCAD. So that is that bit there. There's the integral result here. And uh, let's see, 
um, and then we've also got the proportional integral result. So that's the total result before it goes off for limiting. So let's just go back to this drawing. So that's the summation. There's a total result here, which is what we're actually going to see on the scope as well. If we want to investigate that and look at it, it was there to facilitate you to explore this kind of stuff. Um, but um, because of the time involved, we may not go into massive detail about this, but the one that's really interesting is what's happening here, because that has a very definite impact on uh, what happens when uh, you do the next experiment, uh, which is anti-wind-up. Um, so uh, let's just go back to our HMI. And so once again, we've got the options to control this. So we've got one is running the actual algorithm. Uh, two is our setting our K value. Three is now to actually put in our integration time, which is this value up here. Um, we can actually put in the gain or the attenuation for each of the uh, channel oscilloscope channel outputs. We can move the compass to north position and we can move the uh, compass to the south position and we can exit back to our main system. So that's the HMI. So I just wanted to quickly go through that so you understood what was going on. And now let's look at the software. So uh, here is our main entry from the HMI. Once we select an option nine in this case, uh, that takes us into, uh, into the PI control system. And you'll see here are, these are all the uh, options one, two, three, four, etc., through to 10, as I've just described uh, on the uh, previous uh, image. So that's from here. So there we are, one through to 10 here. And the software is looking at those cases when you enter those numbers. And uh, so I'm not going to go into the setting up of all the bits and pieces, but the ones that are important are actually uh, running the proportional control. So this is where it's actually going to uh, perform the calculations. So once again, it sets all the, um, uh, the uh, DAC6. This is a special version of DAC because we're actually using it for the first time because normally that displays uh, other information. It's actually normally the uh, full range compass error. Uh, or compass position, uh, but it's now being used for something else. So this is why this has been set to the null point of zero. Uh, so we send our uh, uh, message screen, say we're running, and it actually calculates the uh, global integration constant. So let me just go back to this. So this is this value here. So it's actually going to calculate that as a complete entity because it means it doesn't have to keep on repeating this division all the time. So it just becomes one constant, which is actually then uh, multiplied at the end of this uh, calculation. And so let's go back to our software again. Uh, once again, we've got an X to exit. And once again, we've also got the trigger. So the trigger triggers the scope, just like it did when we saw uh, in our last video, where we can very carefully and precisely examine what's going on relative to a known starting point. So this is where our trigger is uh, created for the scope to actually operate on that basis. And once again, we're going to off to get the compass data. This is a cyclic process. So we're going to go off get the compass data. It does a check to make sure there's no failure in that process. And uh, then it's going off to the result is equal to the proportional integral calculation. So let's go off and look at that. And here is the calculation. So the first thing as before, we're going to get the error and we do the uh, minus the global compass value, which we get back. And we now load it into channel one DAC so we can actually see that as an analog signal. And then I'm going to take the proportional result, which is the error times the uh, global K value, which is what we did um, in our previous um, experiment on proportional control. And that now also get loads, uh, loaded into channel two. Um, and now we're starting to get into the integral side. So this is a continuous summation. So we've got the global error integral summation is equal to that value here, plus the error times the global delta t divided by a thousand. Now, I've actually put the um, the uh, the timing uh, within the microcontroller is actually in milliseconds. So I have to divide that to, by a thousand and uh, put it into seconds. I could actually make the whole system in milliseconds, but in general, PID control systems are calculated in seconds um, rather than milliseconds. Uh, so I've just tried to be consistent with that and I've actually made this, um, I've turned our delta time, which is normally milliseconds, uh, and divided that by a thousand. I hope you didn't hear my stomach rumbling there because I haven't had any lunch yet. <laughs> so anyway, um, right, uh, so that's the summation. So that is actually performing uh, this bit here. 
So that's what that bit of code is doing. And then let's go back to the code. Uh, so we're going to load this value um, into channel three so we can observe this on the oscilloscope. And then finally, I'm going to take, uh, oh yeah, yes, before I did that, also um, I take that uh, error, the global error integration summation, and I actually multiply it by the uh, integration constant. So what I've done here is I've performed all of that within that code. Okay, so that's the final multiplication of the constant. And uh, then we get the final result. So the integration result is the uh, global error integration summation. Um, and uh, that's very interesting. Oh, sorry, I don't want the wrong <laughs> line of code. Um, there's the uh, proportional integral result is equal to the proportional result, which we calculated here, uh, plus the integral result, which we've actually calculated here. And it adds those two together as per this summation here to create a total result. And let's just go back to that. So that creates a total result and we load uh, that into channel four. And now we latch all of the DACs at the same time. So all of this information is synchronized to that set of commands. And uh, we just do a quick test on the maths because it's ultimately going to be turned back into an integer. So I'm just doing a floating point limit on this just to make sure there's nothing stupid coming back. And we go back to here, which is where it does the limitation on the servo. Let's just look at that. So this is the limiter that's actually driving here. And then um, it gets loaded into the servo, which is into here, which then moves the whole mechanism. So, uh, and that's pretty much it. And all it does is go around and around and around, uh, doing that all the time for as long as we want. Um, and then when you uh, exit from that, uh, the running of that uh, proportional integral control, it then resets all the DAX back to zero again um, to make sure that everything's back at a normal um, uh, starting point. And that's pretty much for this video. So the next one will be the actual physical implementation of this algorithm. Okay, thank you very much.